Okay, today is the seventh episode as far as the two factors causing decline of Sanatan Dharam into another religion. So those two factors that I have today is uh, number 13 because it's seventh episode. In six episodes, we have discussed 12 such factors. So today, the 13th factor is uh, word vyavastha that is uh, based on merit actually became birth based caste system, you know. So let's take one by one. Number 13 is uh, word vyavastha, which is, of course, we know it is, uh, you know. One is uh, the root is where varne, meaning I select it, you know. So in modern parlance, for example, a young graduate is finishing his college years, then he plans his career, is it not? So that's the way it was when the boy or girl are about to graduate from their gurukul or achayakul then in consultation with Acharya, she or she will decide how, how would they contribute to the society. So a society, you know, we are all as a human being, we live in a, so to say, in a community. And uh, the bottom line is that we do not want anybody to suffer from pain and suffering, is it not? So everybody must contribute to minimize or to get away all kinds of pain and suffering. So in the Vedic terminology, there are prominent reasons why we get into pain. The most prominent is ignorance. You know, when you don't have the right kind of knowledge, you will certainly invite pain. And once the knowledge part is taken care of, its implementation and it's in an equitable manner, in a justiciable manner, so that there is no injustice. So after ignorance, injustice is cause of the pain. The third is, if certain things are not available at the right time, at the right place, then it can be difficult. Like, uh, you know, if you don't get water supply in your home, there will be pain and suffering. If you don't get hospital care, if you don't get medicine, you know, things have to be made available. So I am using three Sanskrit terms, Ajyan, Anyai, and Abhav, you know. So Ajyan is ignorance, Anyai is injustice, Abhav is scarcity of certain things, commodities which could be essential as well as non-essential commodities. So, the, that is what is division of labor. Then there are some people who will say, I will engage in education and research to get away from ignorance. They just had a name, Bahamad. Bahamad doesn't, you know, it is just a name those who are engaged in education and research to bring the society away from ignorance or jyan. Then there are people who are kshatriya. They want to do law enforcement and protect the community from external and internal enemies. So that is anyaya. They don't want any sort of anyaya and uh, nobody should suffer on that account. So those who want to devote in that direction, they may become join army, they may join police forces or other setups, paramilitary forces, they are called like Shakti. And Vash is one who doesn't, who doesn't want a vow of anything anywhere. So by means of production, manufacturing, including farming, they will produce all kinds of things, 
and by way of trade and commerce they will bring one commodity from here to there so that you know anybody who needs something he can walk some distance go to a store and buy those things you know so these are three names brahman kshati vaishya of course they should be educated people they should have necessary skills they should have temperament like if somebody asks me to do a business i don't want to open a store and do business i am more interested in you know doing studies and research you know so everybody has a different kind of temperament knowledge and skill etc so based on that people chose one of these three professions but there were some who were not much educated or not very enterprising they said i will serve these people who are in this enterprising mode so they are called as shudra service class people so these are four pillars of any you know if you build a building you have to have four pillars so nothing is one pillar is important more important than others there was no such thinking you know so bamar shakti vaish shudra if you don't like these names no problem you give your own names but you cannot see any community any society anywhere in the world where do you don't have teachers where you don't have police forces or armed personnel where you don't have business people or farmers or where you don't have service oriented people is it not so this is you know whatever is in the vedas is very universally accept uh, applicable so there should be no doubt about it but now as you know it india went through massive decline particularly in last 5000 years then people became lazy and they built up some sort of hierarchy as if brahman is superior to others and they were not studying well they just wanted that just because i am a child of brahman i should be regarded as brahman people should send me all kinds of gifts so you know you become that kind of a thing so there was a kind of a uh, brahman is supporting the kshati kshati they had hands in gloves and the what was the result the whole country went decline and even foreign invaders you know they just occupied our country we know all this better than anybody else so in this dark age we developed what is called birth based caste system you know that a child of brahman is automatically brahman but that is not the case you know ideally in the classical times one who is engaged in uh, getting rid of ajyan that was brahman as simple as that so you know this is another factor that has caused caused decline or that is an effect of the decline the number 14 is vedas consider all humans as equal but people begin to think that certain people in a society are superior and service class workers should they are inferior though all four varnas are like four pillars of a house so you know this is another related factors that now we uh, for example we are in america where a plumber a electrician or anybody you know he is also duly well respected you know he will come into your house he will sit with you on your sofa and plan out what you want what kind of work he will make an estimate and things like that is it not so nobody treats them in fear but in india you know this sort of a classification came so not only birth based caste system then there was some sort of a hierarchy of course now they are social reforms we are coming out of it but not fully we are out but not only in india in other countries also due to this kind of social exploitation a lot of uh, unwanted baggage is there so we all have to work together because vedas is like vasudev kutumbakam we are all children of one ishwar we are all brothers and sisters 
not only we humans, even all species, you know, even animals are also children of that same Ishwar. So uh, theoretically, our view is very wide and broad. We want to say Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Sarve means all, not only humans, Sarva Praninam also. So we have uh, one of the, you know, loftiest philosophy, but uh, we have to implement it also properly. So that takes care of seventh uh, uh, episode of this uh, uh, factors that we have been discussing. Now I have a next question, which is a supplementary question to what we discussed last week. Last week we discussed one mantra from Atharveda, Ashta Chakya Navadvara. Then it was pointed out that what is the meaning of the word Chakya in Nayukta? Because Nayukta by Yask is most authoritative when it comes to the words appearing in the Veda. So I have checked in the Nayukta, it has three meanings, Chakati, Chayati, and Kamati. So, you know, this is Yask is genius. So he, he just says what these words are ought to reflect. And of course, he must have gone, got all these ideas from his predecessors. You know, this is, a, this is called Rishi Parampaya. So we are very proud of all this. Yask is our, the last Rishi in this chronology and we have his books, Nigantu and Nayukta, you know. So this was in his second chapter. Chakati means something which is fully fulfilled, contented. There is nothing more to add there. Hmm? That is the meaning of Chakati. Chayati, that is more familiar word, that is, you know, uh, like a cow grazes grass, gai ghas chayati. So the root chay is for gati, for dynamism, and that is uh, obviously there in a wheel, in a chakra, which is always moving non-stop, you know. And then kamati means, kam is a sequence, so there is a particular sequence aspect, you know. Now in the Rigveda, where it comes, uh, uh, the reference that Yask is bringing is uh, from first mandal, that means first book, 164 sukta and a certain number of mantras. This sukta is important because we are very familiar with one mantra, dua suparna sayuja sukhaya, that is also in the same sukta. Now the mantra that Yask is referring to is Ratham Ekam Chakram. It is a Chakra word is coming multiple times here and he is referring it to the sun because the sun is also like a wheel. So of course the word meaning of Chakra is a wheel and last time we translated in the context of the human body as glands which I think is meeting all these criteria, chakati, chayati, and kamati, because you know you have to have a sense about a wheel. Wheel is always moving with respect to an axle. The axle may not be visible, but uh, axle is the driving force that makes the wheel move, is it not? Now in case of the sun, of course, we don't see any axle there. So this is, you know, this is that invisible power of Ishwa, you know. The Ishwa is providing the driving force so that the sun is moving like a wheel, you know. And uh, when we say Chakati in the sense, it is, a, it is a, sun is a infinite reservoir of energy there is nothing lacking there, is it not? And it is always on its go. It is never stops. We always see the sun moving and uh, giving away the light, physical light to the entire universe, you know. And the Kamati is, there is a sequence of day and night and so on and so forth. Now in case of the sun as a Chakram, 
there are certain observations that it has six spokes, six spokes referring to six seasons, you know. In Indian context, we have six seasons, each of about two months. Of course, the prominent seasons are said to be the summer, winter, and rainy season. But uh, between the rainy season and uh, the winter, there is a Shaya Detu. Shaya there is autumn. And also then comes Hemant, which is Hem is from him. Snow that is a cold winter, and then Shishir, and then Vasant is uh, um, spring weather, and then summer. So, you know, we have six weather, six seasons in a year, roughly of two months each. So, the wheel that the sun is comprised of is said to have six spokes. Then also, it has 12 spokes referring to 12 months of a year, you know. So Chakyam is coming in the context of sun as a wheel and it also comes in the context of Ratha, a vehicle. When uh, one common axle is moving two wheels on two sides, is it not? So, and then also there is a metaphor which we have discussed in the past that a human being we are also like the purush is a passenger and is a, the life is a journey on, on a earth you know so that takes us so you know when we are discussing chakra it is in the sun it is also in the on the earth which is also a round like a wheel it is also that my body system is like earth and then our glands are like say wheels which are the ashta chakya navadvai so you know the idea is the vedic words have a great amount of elasticity because of their root meaning you know so root meaning yeah, authority like yask they point out what the several possible connotation of a particular word could be. So that was our continuation of the discussion on the word chakra. Here, if I were to go backward in this chronology, you know, we started with the sun, say on the earth and my system as a whole, but a universe can also be seen as a chakra. So here I want to show you, maybe this is an interesting observation by Vyas. He is writing the commentary on, you know, so it is second point 11, or maybe I should show you. This is a, Second chapter, sorry, sorry, no, that was fourth chapter and 11, sorry, I was, so this is fourth chapter and 11, let me show you the Patanjali Sutta, this is, fourth chapter is called Kevalya Pad, so it is Hetu Phala Shaya Alambane, this is again a discussion on law of karma, which Patanjali has covered in second chapter, but it comes again in the fourth chapter, Kavalya Path. Now, here, Vyas is, this is commented by Vyas, Vyas is talking about, if you see my cursor, sansa chakram, you know. So this is the wheel of the universe, so to say, isn't it? So wheel of the universe is, it keeps on moving. That's what the parameter of time is meant by, you know, that's what is 
time factor, so to say. And here he is saying, Shadayam, you know, which means it has six spokes. Now, this is not the sun as a wheel. This is entire universe is as a wheel with the six spokes. So here it is not just the physical universe. It is we human beings living in the universe, you know. And then he says, why do we come into this world? Actually, the cycle is birth and death. And that also makes the birth and death of this universe, Brahma Din, Brahma etc. So just quickly want to show you the six parameters, you know, Hetu is what? Dharmat Sukham. If our karma is accordance, in accordance with our dharma, it gives sukha. If it is adharm, it gives dukha. And then sukha, the sukha, the pleasure that I have derived due to the law of karma, that gives rise to raga. And dukha gives rise to dvesh, you know. So you see there are six parameters here. One, uh, let me make one pair. So one pair is, for example, you know, dharm and adharm, dharm and adharm. Now dharm and adharm give rise to sukh and dukh. Now sukh and dukh give rise to rag and dvesh. And because of rag and dvesh, I do some karm again to get new rewards, is it not? So that fuels the cycle, you know. So whole story begins with, I came into this world because I had Rag and Dvesh. Now Rag Dvesh gives rise to Dharm and Adharm. Of course, I want to do more Dharm, but unintentionally or unknowingly, some Adharm is also always there. And Dharm gives rise to Sukh, Adharm gives rise to Dukh. So these are three pairs, Rag Dvesh, Dharm Adharm and Sukh Dukh. Now, once I have a true taste of Sukh, I want it again. And that gives rise to, that is kind of acting as a fuel for new Rag and Dvesh. So that is what is Sansa Chakya. Why I come again into this world? So why I am, am I born again after death? So the word Chakya, has several connotation. So I have tried to show you, you know, in uh, some of these dimensions. So that completes our discussion on Chakram as uh, told to us by Yask. Last week we had very brief discussion towards the end. It was about certain types of karma you know, and I was to explain three technical terms, namely Kiyamana and Sanchit and Prarabdha, you know. So that time I did it in a very brief manner, but I want to redo it because there is a philosophical aspect, you know. It is nice to say we are performing karm and because of the law of karma, I will get some reward. But philosophy of karma is quite, uh, quite uh, elaborate, you know. First, we have to see there are many times I do karma where law of karma may not be applicable at all. So these are some of the issues which I, because of time factor, I didn't take up at that time. But today, we will uh, discuss it at some length. Let me show you again a, a commentary by Vyas, I think. Let's see, I can. I hope I can find it easily. I think it is in the context of 4.13, so.
Okay, I think it is in it is in the context of four point nine. Yeah. Okay. This is the original Patanjali Sutta. This is again in the nature of karma. You know, if we look at four point eight. Tatas tad vipak, you know, vipak is always in the direction of, in the context of karma, so ripening of the karma, is it not? So let's see what is we are saying here. 4.9. I should have made a note of it. Just one minute, maybe. Let's see. Sorry about that. I am. I should have made a number note here, but I think I'm close to it. Is your background noise? I don't know. I only I am hearing it or. No, we could. We can also hear it. Okay. Yeah. This is 4.7, you know. The original Patanjali Sutta is, yeah. Karma Ash. This, uh, let me do the other part. Karma Ashukla Akrishnam Yogina Tividam Itayesham. What it means is, Yogi, Yogina means is plural. Uh, you, in the context of yogis, their karma is Ashukla and Akeshna. Krishna is black, bad, Shukla is white, good. So the karma that is performed by a yogi is uh, neither bad nor good. Whereas it is of three types, Itayesham for others. So let's see what is Vyasa is saying is Chatushpadi. Kalu yam karma jati. You know, jati means the karma as a whole are of four types, as if there are four legs, you know. So, what are they? Krishna, they are bad karma. Shukla, the good ones. And Krishna, Ashukla, means it's bad, slightly bad, you know. Let's see, he is saying. That the Krishna, the bad ones are Duratmanam. You know, these are bad people. Some bad people do bad karma, is it not? Now, Shukla Krishna is mixture. It is bad, but with some addition of good, you know. 
some positive but more negative bahi sadhan sadhya you know that is very common for us that we would like to do you know as good as possible but some bad things happens you know satya par pida anugrah dwara you know you know we in our day to day life we unknowingly you know harm some people and favor some people and all these kind of karma build up what is called karma shay you know and there are shukla which are more positive type you know you can look at shukla as dharma and krishna as adharma so he is making combinations very much adharm more adharm less dharm more dharm less adharm and neither dharm nor adharm you know these are four combinations he is making so what i want to show you is you know let's see so this was slightly background now i can come to your uh what we wanted to discuss last time yeah okay so karm and the law of karm you know now what the point here is every karm is not necessarily going to go through karm phal siddhant you know it may not bring a reward you know so we have just now seen karm are of four types vyas and discord i wish i saw this slide then i would have known exactly 4.7 you know so i wasted time in 11 and 9 and things like that now let's see so what he is saying is the yogis that is original statement by patanjali yogis do a shukla akashan you know they are because they are not interested in the rewards you know or in other words they are karm is surrendered to ishwar that is what is called ishwar pranidhan they say i don't want any reward and then i think we might have discussed in past like a child just does something what his mother tells him without expecting any reward is it not so if you have that kind of bonding like a child has to his mother so you know if i have that with ishwar then i don't want any reward i just you know by very nature of mine i do good karma you know now the other three types they are going to be processed as accordance of law of karma so this was the part i did not discuss last time and it is very important because otherwise a common man thinking is a big karma become being reward okay yes it is true for a common man but we can rise to a higher level you know where we don't expect any reward and then our karma is not getting not under the influence of klesh so you know that sansar chakra which i just discussed in another uh, context that will not be fueled you know so if say i am a yogi of a high standard i perform some karma which is a shukla and akashna then i don't get reward no sukh no dukh because i am detached from all that so i never go into bhog you know and uh, then there is no consequent vasna or rag dvesh etc is it not so i am not fueling new place now that is what is the strategy of kapil and patanjali in sank and you now the other three types now for them this sequence is important kiyaman sanchit and prayat you know kiyaman is ongoing which is you know sometime i gave an example say i decide to kill somebody by a gun but then you know for some days i will buy a gun i will get to know that person how 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 does he spend his whole day and where does he go etc so what is the right kind of situation where i can kill him so i will do all kinds of background research and all that but uh, this is a long process several weeks and months later say i kill him and when i kill him then the whole term is over then it 
becomes sanchit as if the lid has been covered you know now i cannot undo it anymore suppose i bought the gun but i changed my mind so i didn't kill him is it not but once i have killed him all those uh, peripheral background work have come to a some sort of completion you know so sanchit is it is a some sort of done now it is completed but it doesn't automatically bring its reward because there is some time gap that is called as gestation period so in that gestation period that karma is residing in a vessel so to say and that is called as karma shay and then after the gestation period is over then it is called there is a ripening of karma shay now the rewards begin to flow so that is called as karm vipak so they explain it through this metaphor of cooking pot on a burner so you know there is a pot on the burner so first you are adding all kinds of ingredients into it as if that is key amar so when all the ingredients have been added now you put a cover on the lid lid on the vessel now it is sanchit now it is cooking you know so that is it is going through the gestation period now pot is on the burner now when it is all cooked now the dish is ready to be eaten then you eat it and then if it tastes good it is sukh if it tastes bitter it is dukh for you is it not so that is to explain these complexities by karm and the law of karma so the reason i wanted to come back to this is because it's not that every karm has to go through this sequence you know like the yogi's karm ashukla or krishna what is called a nishkam karm you know other than these these are all sakam karm where we have the reward in our mind intentions or to receive some rewards upon completion of the karm is that okay that makes so we have reviewed this idea of you know kiyaman and uh, sanchit and but it's not automated i was trying to uh, tell you if you are in nishkam karm like a yogis that's the way yogis do then uh, these are not relevant you know he just doesn't bother of course something happens to him but he is not going through the bhog of it you know like uh, you eat food and you enjoy the taste of it but sometimes you eat food just for your nutrition you you just you know you are detached from it so that is a maturity of life you know at in childhood we did something we very much enjoyed that but today if you do the same thing you may not enjoy it you are just giving company to your child is it not you are playing football with him just to give him company you don't want to win really <laughs> the victory in your game with your child has no meaning to you but you want to see the smile on your child's face for him victory is very important is it not so this but is it can't you enjoy while you are doing nishkam karm excuse me can't you enjoy why while you are doing in nishkam karm i mean you know now the issue is uh, later in maturity you you know we want to get away from dukh common man goes away from dukh and he goes towards sukh but what kapil and patanjali and vedic ishis are telling us you know no matter how hard you try this is not a smart strategy going from dukh to sukh the smart strategy is atyant nivritti of dukh you know that is mm. towards uh, samadhi and moksha type you know so well, you enjoy in the samadhi also right yeah so you know in the samadhi the point i am trying to make is sukh and dukh is state of mind it is a chitta vritti you know 
Mm. And in samadhi, I am away from any chitta vritti. That means definitely I am away from dukkha as well as sukh, but I am in another you know, anand, you know. Yeah. Anand, anaya. Uh -huh. So, you know, samadhi is like, uske anand swarup mein magn ho jana. Right. So, we get a taste of that in sushupti. So, you know, our Vedic Rishi is trying to tell us, you will never win over Duk, if you just try to get towards Sukh. Mm. Because in this world, nobody is Sukhi, you know. Yeah. So the strategy is to take a clue from Sushupti that in Sushupti, I have never have a Duk. So let me practice that I, you know, Sushupti comes to me as default, but when I earn it, it becomes Samadhi. Mm. And when I do it, periodically again and again then after death i will be in moksha mm. so the sequence is shushupti samadhi moksha you know mm. so here the strategy is not from duk to sukh you know so patanjali is saying one who considers sukh as sukh is actually with avidya so you know he defines avidya as Maybe I can show you that uh, quickly because Yoga Sutras are direct are on my file. Uh, I can just share the screen. So, yeah. You know, this is his definition of avidya. This is second point five. Anitya is treated as Nitya, Ashuchi as Shuchi, and Dukh as Sukh. So, you know, what we call Sukh, actually it is Dukh. But because I term it Sukh, you know, when I say I, I am, I experience Sukh out of it, Patanjali will say, you are inflicted with Avidya. So, Avidya has these four features to treat Anitya as Nitya, Ashuchi as Shuchi, Dukha as Sukh, and what is Anatma is to treat as Atma. So, you know, from Patanjali's point of view, the, you know, the, the, the Sukh itself is inadmissible. He is saying what you are calling Sukh actually is Dukh. You just, um, because, and we know it, there is no Sukh in the world which is which is objectively universal, you know. If something gives you sukh, it doesn't give sukh to many people, many other people, is it not? So True. we are familiar with, there is a lack of universality in sukh. But when it comes to dukh, there is a universality because if I am hungry, I am in dukh. And that applies to every human being, you know. So, Sukh mm -hmm. is uh, universal, but Sukh is not universal. <laughs> mm. So, you know, our Vedic Rishi has treated Dukh and Sukh in a very, uh, that's why mm -hmm. they go for contentment, Santosh. You know? So, what he says mm. is at your current state, don't try to be, yeah, Krish has written something, contentment and compassion. And, yeah. So, you know, uh, that is right. So, he says, Santoshad Anuttama Sukh Lab. You know, if I could go back to his second chapter, so he is guiding me as, don't go for Sukh, you train yourself towards contentment, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the question I had on... Uh... Yeah, this second point 42. Santoshad Anuttama mm. Sukh Lab. So he is, you know, mm -hmm. if I am going towards Sukh, he is navigating me. No, no. The best Sukh is Santosh. So you become a contented person and uh, then you go after the Samadhi Lab, you know, for your lasting happiness, so to say. Yes. Mm. Sorry, I, uh, let me hear again. Yeah. Yeah, what I was saying uh, last time uh, uh, with the karma is uh, with the prarabdha, yeah. is it fixed 
is it fixed for the it says that for this lifetime what what you start off with is prarab but is that is that okay. fixed okay that is a very interesting question uh, very interesting question let me see if i can quickly bring out one file So, you know, now we are, okay, yeah, I have a diagram, maybe, so, oh, we just have five minutes. Let me see if, when, you know, very quickly I can discuss this aspect. You know, this Karamphal Siddhant is treated as very, very complex thing complex to the extent that they say it's like Heisenberg's principle of uncertainty, it is unknowable. <laughs> right. Mm. But still they try to explain and Patanjali is uh, describing law of karma in second chapter in just four statements actually. But uh, uh, let's see if I can I don't know if I have that. Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, let me see. Very quickly, I will go. If you are interested, then maybe we can repeat it next time and give more time. You know, let's consider this. Our current human life is nth life. You know, just it's a sequence. You know, so uh, let's see. Am I sharing this screen? No. No. Okay, let me, I sometimes bring the file, but forget this game. Okay. Okay. So, this is a schematic I have tried to capture the, what uh, Patanjali and Vyasa are trying to tell us, you know. So, let's see. So, his Patanjali's statement is, you know, this, uh, this uh, Jati Ayu Bhog, you know. Sati Mule, let's see. Sati Mule Tad Vipako Jati Ayu Bhoga. This is second point 13. What he's saying is, uh, whatever the karmasha I have, so, suppose I die, let's look at the end. This is my nth life and time is going downward. So previous life, suppose I was human being. This is important because only as a human being, I perform karma, you know, which uh, is uh, going through law of karma. Animals and birds, they don't have freedom. So they don't do actually karma in technical sense, you know. So let's assume in previous life, I was a human being. This was my birth and down the timeline, this is my death. So impressions of karma, this is yellow background, so may not be easy to each read. Let's see, impatience of karma, what is called karmasha, at the time of death, you know, now that has to, that has a component called, that has to be experienced in future life. That is called adeshta janma vedniya. Okay, so what is it, what this statement means is, you know, when I die at that moment, my karmasha is broken into two parts as primary and second day, you know. So primary is called as pradhan and second day is called as upasarjan, you know, these are technical terms, no harm. Now this pradhan, this determines what is called jati, ayu and bhog. So suppose it has been uh, the higher authority has decided that based on this group, Pradhan, I will be a human being. Then this is, this has, uh, this has become my Prarabdha. So, you know, Karmasha had two parts. One part has become my Prarabdha. That is actually the Pradhan part. And uh, that has given rise to Jati as human beings and some lifespan and some sort of a bhog 
say, will I be born in a very poor family or, or not so in a middle class or in a rich class, very educated or less educated? All those parameters have been fixed. So this is called my species, lifespan and experience. They all have been, you know, finalized here at this point, you know. Now this is my current life. So this is my prarabdha at this point, at the time of my birth, you know. This is now lying because this could not be handled within this human life. So this remains still as a karmasa, which is a, like my laser book, you know, reserved account, you know. That will be coming into effect some future life. Why all this happened probably I can explain it later. But let's look at my present life now. The next slide where, you know, this blue side was my prarabdha. And in my next life, to karma also, is it not? Now your answer prarabdha is, uh, is not that easy. You know, my jati was fixed, but are you and bhod, I can, I can increase as well as diminish. If I change my lifestyle, if I improve my lifestyle, my Ayu can increase, lifespan can increase. And also I get addicted into drugs, etc. I can reduce my Ayu, is it not? So even though this is my Prayabdha, but Jati cannot be changed, but Ayu can be changed. And certain things will change what changes are you change bhog also but certain things don't change my are you but change my bhog only is it not whether i eat cashew or i, I eat uh, peanuts you know something like that you know so only bhog is changing if i have a lot of money i eat more cashew cashews and uh, if i have less money i eat peanuts so probably health span wise not much changing so I hope you see it. Among Jati has been fixed at the time of death of previous life. But now as I am proceeding in my current life, my certain actions will change both Ayu and Bhog. And certain actions will change only Bhog. You know? And uh, then, you know, certain actions, certain karma, they are not to be they cannot be treated somehow accounted in this human life. And they will somehow add up into this upsurgeon part. And somehow some part of upsurgeon will come here. So it's a lot of complex diagram. <laughs> you know. And then when I die in at the end of this, again I will have one uh, padhan part and one upsurgeon for the next life and plus one at life. So Patanjali and Vyas have described in detail, but uh, you know it requires much more time. But I hope I just I hope you got the idea that yes, yes when I was born there was a prayabdha, but uh, in the current life I can change certain. I cannot change become from human to elephant. Human human life is fixed, but I can change my my bhog in the current life as well as I can change my ayu. Of course, you know, we are like some children is born with blood cancer. Certain things are there, you know, because that's the kind of ayu he was born with, is it not? So some child is born with certain defects, you know. So doctor will say he won't live longer than 20 years, something like that. But with some effort, maybe 20 can become 30. Or maybe somebody is born with something like a lifespan of 60, but he can elongate it to 80, 100, or he can shorten it to 30, 40, if he gets into addictions and all kinds of risks, etc. Et and of course, we know it, you can change your bhog also. Bhog also. What changes are you will change bhog also. That is called a dui vipak. There are a lot of technical terms there. Niyat vipak, aniyat vipak, ti vipak means jati ayu bhog, all can be changed. Then dui, once you are born, then dui vipak, 
only ayu and bhog can change. Ek vipak means only bhog can change. Then there is something which is not this janma vedniya that cannot be accounted in the current life. So that will go to other stages of Vedniya for future life. Then previous life there was Upsajan, that basket, it will add to that Upsajan. Now as your current life is changing, some of Upsajan may come here, you know, like you are studying Patanjali and maybe there is something in you and suddenly you become a great yogi. You have that sanskar in Upsajan. You know, suddenly that sort of a thing. So things can happen. Somebody can quickly go down his life. Somebody can quickly. That is why they say, I am Vachityat, Sishti Vachit. You know, it's a very, you cannot explain why somebody did like that or why something happened to that person. Because Upsajan is very complex. You know, that has hidden sanskar from hundreds, thousands of lives. You know? Right. So law of karma is very, very yeah. Our issue is saying it is unexplainable. Unexplainable in the sense they can describe the law and it, but they can nobody can say this person is going through this bog or something is happening. What is that due to? You cannot correlate it. Like Lalu Pasad Yadav may be enjoying his life. <laughs> so, he, yeah. man, so why is he enjoying yeah. his life? Nobody knows. You have to see you have to, you have to see all of his lives to kind of make sense of his love life. Yeah, you have to see all the, all the past pictures. So it's very fun. Anyway, we have exceeded the time today. Yeah, thank so you. Thank much. you. I think uh, this this has thrown a lot of light. Uh, you can kind of uh, yeah, uh, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea that this philosophy of karma and uh, uh, law of karma is very, very complex. So I wanted to give you that idea so that Kiman, you know, is not valid always. You know, you cannot judge everybody by the same scale. So there are a lot of complexities. Anyway, thank you. That was a nice time. And uh, we'll thank, you very much. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Good night.